Fanny Ann. Fanny Ann, I would like to have a look at your face instead of the back of your head. I don't have much time for backs and heads. In fact, I don't have much time for people who won't talk to me. There's lots of will, so if you won't, I'll go. Hey, what's this? Tears? Oh, goodness me, this won't do here. Right, now sit up and we'll see what we can do for you. Here, use this. You look as though you've got a bird's nest up there. That's better. Now, what's up? I want to get up and I want to go back to school. I'm in the school play at the end of term and I've missed a whole week of rehearsals. I'm afraid you won't be going back to school this term. Not going back? No. Now, you're going to be very brave and sensible, Marianne. You see, you have a slight fracture. But if you get up now, you may have a wonky leg for the rest of your life. Well, I'd rather have a wonky leg than stay in bed another day. Oh, no, you wouldn't. And anyway, I don't want to have to come and look after you for 60 years. Imagine coming to see you for 60 years. <laughs> How long will I have to stay in bed? Not longer than six weeks, I should say. Oh, no. People go mad when they shut up. But you won't be shut up. Now, come on. I'm going to call your mother, and I want to see a nice smiling face. Hmm? It's not much fun for her, you know. And I'm sure you want to help her. Mrs. Austin! Do I have to lie in bed all the time? Can't I get downstairs and things like that? You can get up to wash, but that's all. A cracked bone has to be treated very gently. And if you don't do as you're told, my girl, I shall have to put you in plaster. That's better. She's a very sensible girl, Mrs. Austin. I'm sure we'll manage between us. The main thing is to keep her occupied. Now, don't come down. I'm sure Marianne wants to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Not at all. Oh, bye, Marianne. Oh, Mum. Oh. Poor love. I'm afraid you're very disappointed. But never mind. We'll think of lots of lovely things to do, mm. and we'll make the time fly by. All right? Mm. Now then, let's cheer you up and have a little read, shall we? Two more goes, I'll be able to hang you. Oh dear. Um, why? <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> wing. It can't be lapwing or swing. How about tea? You lost. Look, Ooh. it's sewing. Oh gosh. Sewing. Do you remember this? Mm. Be a love and give it a turn out for me, and I'll go make some tea. Marianne, what a mess. I thought you were going to help me. Sorry, Mum. Oh, well, you might try and help. I didn't ask you to do much. And it isn't easy with Dad being away, having you in bed all the time. Oh, really, Marianne? All the buttons have rolled out of the bed. There are pins and needles everywhere. Well, you'll just have to be careful when you get up. Put your slippers on when you get up to wash. Really, you're impossible sometimes, Marianne. Marianne, you're not listening. Well, it's this pencil, Mum. Oh, it's so nice. Look, I can never make my drawings look quite like I want them. The walls aren't straight, and the chimney's too large, and it looks funny. Well, never mind. Put it away now. We can try again later and have some tea. 
Oh, I suppose I shall have to clear up all this mess. I could throttle you, Marianne. Daddy rang last night. He wanted to know how you were. Oh, Marianne, do wake up. I want to tell you about Daddy. Oh, dear. Well, that's funny. That's the house in my dream. Well, aren't you pleased? That house, it's my house. But there's nobody in it. Oh, there must be someone in. Hello! Let me in! I'll wake up, darling, and I'll go and get breakfast. Yes. not know what you want. Come down and let me in. I can't. But I've got to get in. Isn't there anybody else who can let me in? No. Do you live here all by yourself? It's none of your business. Well, stay alone then in your horrid house. I don't care. I can't come down because there are no stairs. No stairs. No stairs. No stairs. Hello, Marianne. How are you this afternoon? Oh, something wrong? How's she been? A bit bored, I'm afraid. Well, how would you feel lying in bed all day? Nothing to do and stuck in a stuffy room. I want to get out. If it's any comfort to you, I, was, I had to stay in bed for four weeks once. Did you break your leg riding? No, playing rugger. Well, I bet you weren't good and patient all the time. 
I bet you complained and made a fuss. Now then, Marianne, I'm sure that Dr. Burton was a very good patient. No, 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 no. She was quite right, Mrs. Austin. I was much more impatient. I was awful, really awful. What did you do? Tell me. Certainly not. You'll only go and do the same thing, like... Yes? No. Now, one thing I will tell you, though. I'll tell you what my mother did. Yes, do tell us. She got me a governess. A governess? Mm -hmm. mm. And we thought it would be a good idea if we found someone like that for you. But lessons when I'm ill. But you're not ill, Marianne. You have a cracked bone that's got to be given the chance to heal. And you'll find it so much easier when you get back to school. It'll help to keep your mind occupied. But don't governesses cost a great deal of money? <laughs> I'm going to ask the education officer for a teacher. What will I have to do? French and Latin and geography and history and all those boring subjects. Now then, Marianne, excuse me. Yes. yes, all those boring subjects. Any more questions, madam? Yes. Can I ask you something special? How special? Well, I want to know if you ever dream. Of course I dream. Everyone dreams. But, but if you have a dream, a dream that you like, can you go back into it? Have you got a dream you want to go back into? No. Well, kind of. Well? Not really. I shouldn't get too occupied with dreams. Not unless they're very nice ones. Now, I shall get you a teacher as soon as possible. She'll take your mind off your troubles. I wish I could remember how to draw stairs the proper way. Ooh. Oh, about. So, if I draw the house around them, maybe they'll look a little more like stairs. Marianne, this is Miss Chesterfield, who's come to teach you. Hello, Marianne. Oh, I thought it would be old. Why? Like a governess. Really, Marianne? Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Austin. I know what she means. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to get to know each other, all right? I'm not a governess. I'm a teacher. Oh. What a lot of uh, dolls you've got. My father sends them to me. Where from? He's an engineer. He has to go off to different places looking for oil. That sounds interesting. Where is he now? He's in Tunisia. He rings up sometimes. Though not very often, because it's very expensive. But he rang out when he knew I was ill. Do you ever get calls from abroad? No. I do sometimes get them from London. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we ought to start our lesson with geography, and then you can learn something about the places your father's been to. Do you have any other pupils? Yes, some others. Oh, please tell me about them. Well, there's Evelyn. She's 13 and having extra tuition in Latin and French. And she's very clever. Oh, I'm not very clever. I expect you're clever at something. Which subject do you like best? Who else do you teach? A small boy called Robert. He's only seven and he can't read or write. And twice a week I go to see a boy called Mark. He's recovering from a bad illness. Is he in bed like me? Yes, he's in bed all the time. How long has he been ill? Six months. Six months? How does he stand it? Well, he reads a lot. Well, I don't think I'll ever get used to lying in bed. Though I do quite like reading and drawing. But if Dr. Burton said I could get up, I would right away. Well, I suppose Mark would, if it was just a question of getting up, but it isn't. He has to learn to walk all over again. And it's difficult. And it hurts. If he really tries, he may get better, but if he doesn't, he probably won't. And now, Marianne, we're going to learn about Africa. Africa is a continent. Do you know what a continent is? Yes. And do you know where the name Africa comes from? No. Well, I expect you know that Africa is one of the five continents. It has a long and troubled history and has terrible problems to deal with now. I expect you know something of the fighting which has been going on there, but in order to be able to understand it, you must know something of the history. And please listen, Marianne, because you're going to have to write all of this out for me. The the name Africa was first given by the Romans to the northern coast which they conquered. 
Carthage is the capital of these provinces. Marianne, are you listening or drawing? Oh, no, 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 no. got an after all. Yeah. Well, wake up and tell me how I did it. How I did what? Well, got in, of course. I didn't let you in. So who did? Well, I just opened the door. And there are stairs. You said there weren't any when I was talking to you outside. There weren't. They must have come since. How could they? How could you be up here? And the stairs come afterwards. They must have been here all the time. You just didn't want to come down and let me in. No, I didn't. But there weren't any stairs. Why didn't you want to let me in? Well, I just didn't. But there are stairs. And they're not new. They're old. You can see where people have walked on them and worn the steps down. And the banister's all smooth where people's hands have gone. Come and see if you don't believe me. <laughs> well, aren't you coming? No, I believe you. There's a complete flight of stairs outside. But they weren't there yesterday. Yesterday? Not the first day you were here. Outside here, I mean, saying you've got to get in. That's impossible. There's a lot of things happen here that are impossible. For instance, look out of the window. No, look a bit down to that side. Do you see that rose bush? Oh, yes, there's nothing very special about it. But I heard it wasn't there yesterday. Well, oh, perhaps someone came and just planted it. I've been here all the time. I never heard a sound. It just appeared. Well, perhaps it isn't real. Perhaps it's just a rose bush someone put there. I'm going to have a look at it. No, don't. Don't go out there. Come back. Please come back. Don't you like being left alone? Not much. How long have we been here? I don't know. Two days, two weeks, or two months. I don't know. I haven't counted. But who does the house belong to? You can't live here all by yourself. Anyway, there's no furniture unless there's some in the other rooms. I haven't been in the other rooms. You ask an awful lot of questions. Well, wouldn't you ask an awful lot of questions if you just walked into a house in the middle of the night and found it was empty, except for someone just sitting there? You're very bad-tempered. No, I am not! But you're so maddening, and you're trying to be mysterious. I suppose I am, but I really don't know much. I don't know whose this house is or where it is. I just find myself here, like you find yourself out there. You did just find yourself up there, didn't you? Yes. And you said you got to get in. Yes. It's funny. I've got the feeling that I have to be here. Why? Well, if I knew why, it wouldn't be just a feeling, would it? What's your name? I'm not going to tell you until I know who you are. Why should I tell you first? No reason. I won't call one look of anything. Oh. I don't like it here. You don't have to stay. Go back from wherever you came from. But you come too. I can't. Why ever not? Because I can't walk. You can't walk? In the uh, 15th century, Portuguese explorers sailed along the northwest coast. coast. They, they got as far as Sierra Leone and the Congo. Can you see where that is, Marian? Yes. Uh, after that, they went on down to the Cape of Good Hope. The most famous of First, these. you say there weren't any stairs, and then you say you can't walk. If you can't walk, it doesn't matter whether there are stairs. 
How did you get in? I'm not here all the time. Well, where are you when you're not here? I don't know. But whenever I get back here, I sort of know I've been here before. But I never know when I'm coming. No, I didn't know either. But still I don't understand about the stairs. You said there weren't any when I was talking to you outside. There weren't! How did you know? How? If you really can't walk, how did you get to the door? I suppose you crawled. You're so silly. First you say you can't let me in because there's no stairs, and then you say you can't walk. And now you say you know there's no stairs because you went and looked. Why don't you shut up and go away? At least I can. At least I can walk out of this house. Go on, then walk out and go back to wherever you came from. I don't care. Is there anything wrong, Mr. Sibyl? Oh, no. She um, looked rather tired. I thought I'd better leave her to sleep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. It's all right. Have you been ill? Were you always... I mean, could you walk before you were ill? Of course I could. I was perfectly right before. Well, perhaps it's just weakness. And perhaps if you practised... No, it's the illness. It did something to my muscles. They don't seem to work properly anymore. I got over feeling ill ages ago. But I do exercises, but they don't seem to do much good. You're called Mark, aren't you? Yes. How did you know? Who are you? My name is... <laughs> 